Hi everyone, Lauren Culp here, publisher and CEO at CUNSight.com, and I am joined today by a very special guest from Kina Mutual Group, David Sweitzer, the Senior VP of Consumer and Advisor Experience. David, how are you? I'm doing great, Lauren. Thank you very much. Good. Well, I'm glad that you got, were able to take some time to connect with me today, and David and I were talking right before the video that we're both in Madison, Wisconsin, so a little chilly, cold spring here, but we're uh, hanging in there. <laughs> So David, I'm gonna go ahead and dive right in. You know, obviously these are really difficult times for so many people and I'm curious, what is CUNY Mutual Group doing in this time to really support credit unions and their members? Sure, Lauren, you know, um, I always keep hearing people say it's unprecedented times. And, you know, one of the first things that we did is, you know, we said, what's our number one priority? And, you know, that of course is the safety and well-being of our um, employees. But 1A is, you know, how do we support um, our customers during this very difficult time? And the good news is um, we're in a really strong financial position, so we're well positioned to be able to support them. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I think was really important early on is we moved um, about 95% of our employees very quickly to a virtual or, rem or remote environment. And that was important to maintain continuity in, in supporting our customers. And fortunately, through most of that, our um, service level agreements have stayed pretty good. Um, so uh, we feel good about kind of the technological and also the cultural um, adaptation we had to do. Um, but, you know, we're trying to remove the red tape and be flexible in a lot of different ways. And let me just give you a, a few examples um, for today. Um, one, as you know, cash was really important early on. Uh, so one of the first things we did is we um, increased the limits on our bond for on-premises cash coverage by a half a million dollars. And we did that at no charge to our policy and then we also provide um, risk alerts um, to our policy owners, our bond policy owners. Um, but with COVID, there's so many things going on and so much like fraud um, that we've expanded and all those risk alerts we're sending not only to our policy owners, to um, all credit unions. Um, we've instituted across the whole enterprise um, this real premium payment flexibility. Uh, as you know, uh, members are really struggling with cash flow. Um, so we're trying to be as flexible as possible on, on how they um, make payments. Um, we've uh, really tried to reduce the red tape. You know, a lot of people are dealing with unemployment, and so we have an un involuntary unemployment coverage. So how do we streamline that process and make it easier? Um, and also, if you're right about um, the CARES Act, um, there's a lot of different things that um, uh, members and employees can do to access their 401k. So we've waived all our fees um, as it relates to those people that are trying to get loans or um, um, withdrawals from their 401k. And another thing I would just mention is through our, um, our foundation, CUNY Mutual Foundation, um, is we've uh, uh, tried to continue to support um, QAID or CUAID in their disaster recovery uh, program. And then we've also uh, done a match with our employees to make sure they can contribute or if they want to contribute to uh, nonprofits. Uh, during this time, we want to support that through our foundation. Um, there's a variety of different examples, um, more than you probably want me to list in, in this video, but um, you know, CUNYMutual.com has a lot of information out there. And in, in fact, by, uh, I think by product, we provide a lot of information on the things that we're trying to do. That's amazing. Well, we'll link to that page as well in the post here so that our audience can get connected to all of that great information. It sounds like you all have a lot going on and I'm always so impressed to hear about folks who are able to quickly pivot into having their entire workforce or most of their workforce work remotely. Lots of really great stuff that you guys are working on. So I'm curious, thinking ahead, how do you think that this is going to affect credit unions and the way that we all do business in the long run? Obviously, so many things are changing right now. Yeah. I think that's the most interesting question right now because like, we're all dealing with it. We go, okay, for sure it's changed things in the short term, right? Right. Clear. We're all dealing with that right now. But what are the long-term implications? You know, I think it's going to be interesting on different sectors of the economy and I think, you know, different elements of our and credit unions um, value proposition. I was just uh, reading an article um, called Strategy and a Structural Break. And it was actually an article that was written a while back. Um, but it's particularly right, um, relevant right now because by all definitions, um, we're coming out of a structural break. And the author, one of the main premises they say is there's a whole variety of ways that you can come out of or go forward um, from a structural break. But the one way that you can't or shouldn't come out of it is to do more of the same. And I think that's so relevant um, right now. So if you 
if you believe that, and I think that's really, really important, then the question becomes, so what are we going to do differently? And um, there's a couple obvious answers that we're all talking about and you're talking about, I'm sure, as well, and that's just digital. Um, you know, the, the, the rate of digital investment was going through the roof coming into um, the pandemic. It's going to be um, even more coming out of it. And, um, you know, I think the laggards um, that are out there that were reluctant to do um, digital are being forced to do it right now. And then, you know, um, what I'm reading, some of these um, social distancing measures, they're going to be on here in 2021, maybe down in 2022. So obviously, uh, digital is a big one. The other obvious one is uh, remote work. And I think that's been real interesting to us and a lot of organizations. And we start to realize <clears throat> that there's a whole variety of roles um, that we realize can be done from anywhere. And if you think about that, then that really expands the talent pool that we're able to go after if we're not looking at a specific uh, geographic area. Right. Um, so the talent pool expands. And then this is, I think, just as important, if not more important, I think it enables us all to really turbocharge our diversity and equity efforts. And I think if we miss out on this um, opportunity right now, because we can start to recruit from a, a larger um, geographic base, I think that would, be, um, that would be too bad. The other thing is, um, you know, this, um, this whole pandemic is impacting different segments of our population um, very differently. Right. This is also some research from our Multicultural Center of Excellence. And some of it's interesting and some of it's just kind of sad about how different impacts are happening to, to different people. And I think it goes back to what Crenium's about, what CUNY Mutual is about. And for us to be there and support um, these different segments right now, one is I think it's core to our mission. And two is I think it um, allows for us to engender really some long-term loyalty. And I think the last thing I would just say on, on this is, you know, the script isn't yet written on this. Um, I think, you know, consumers are still trying to realize how they adapt to this. And I think for us and credit unions to keep our finger on the pulse of what consumers are thinking, um, how they're starting to act, you know, whether that's online forums or whatever mechanisms we have to stay in touch with how the consumer is changing, I think is going to be really, really important for us to do that or even do that more during this time. Wow, that's so true. Well, and such a good point about really we have this opportunity now as we're leaning into remote workforce and all of that to be the leaders in, in diversity and equity and inclusion as an employer, as employers across the industry. So really, right. really fantastic points there. And you're so right about digital. And I'm hoping to, you know, obviously we'll see so many more members who are having to adapt to digital who maybe have been slow to adopt it. Right. So across the board, member perspective, employee perspective, employer perspective, so much is changing. I agree. Lots of good insights. So David, I want to switch gears for a minute. How you're a senior leader in the credit union space. You've got a lot of really great perspective on all of these things. I'm curious, how are you doing personally? Are, are you sane? What's been keeping you sane if you are through these, these really challenging times? Yeah, you know, we were talking about this a little before we, um, we started. Um, you know, one thing I've noticed working at home is the weather has a much bigger impact on me than it did when I went in the office. And I've, I've mentioned that to a few people and everybody seems to agree on that. So so the good days are great, right, with the good weather days. Um, but right. the bad weather days, it's like, you know, I still got to force myself to get out there. I still got to make sure that, you know, I don't just stay in my office. Um, I've got two boys, 14 and 16, and uh, it's, it's kind of funny because they, they both said they like virtual school because it's easier. Um, oh. Yeah. I think one's getting a master's in um, Call of Duty and the other one in, uh, you know, Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, but the, the one thing my um, wife had us do that I thought was kind of corny um, at first, and she, she says to us do a, um, a gratitude journal every single day. And I thought a little hokey at first, but the more we do it, um, the more beneficial it's been to me. And it just kind of forces us all, all to remember that um, we have it pretty good. And in particular, me, relative to a lot of people with their experience, um, I have it really, really darn good. And um, well, the other interesting thing, Lauren, is, you know, to see how employees are responding. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, people are sharing photos of, you know, the most interesting thing in their home office or, you know, people's hair is growing out um, or, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, the people are wearing hoodies to their office. Um, the one thing I think we're using to adapt is the virtual happy hour. You know, mm -hmm. those are uh, very prevalent now. The one thing I keep joking that the one thing that I hope doesn't change when we go back to the office is that at four o'clock, I can still have a happy hour in my office when I get back to, uh, to corporate right. headquarters. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think that's the one thing that's not going to stick. But 
You never know. I mean, the script isn't written yet, right? <laughs> exactly right. Yep. Yep. So I'm doing good. Thank you. Good. I'm glad. I love the idea of a gratitude journal and you're so true. So right on there with, you know, we all have it so good compared to so many. And so there's a lot that we have to be thankful for, even, even in what are very challenging times for everybody. Yep. I agree. Well, David, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure getting to talk to you. I want to ask, though, if you have any last thoughts that you would like to share with our audience. Yeah, you know, the only thing I would uh, share, and it's what I've been telling my team and the people I work around, is make sure you take care of yourself. I mean, these are unprecedented times. Um, Even though we might think we're doing good, it's, you know, it's stressful. We're dealing with family members or people we know in, in challenging situations. So, you know, everybody continue to take care of yourself. That is a perfect way to end. David, thank you so much for taking some time to join me today. Again, we'll go ahead and link to Keto Mutual Group's COVID response page in the post here so that everybody can get access to that pretty easily. If you had any other questions or anything, that's a perfect place to go to reach out to Keto Mutual Group. David, thank you so much. Take care. Hopefully there's some nice, warm, sunny weather around the corner for us here in Madison. And here's to the next time that we can uh, run into each other in person. Thanks a lot, Lauren. Take care. Thank you. Take care.